Approximately 711, Tariq ibn Ziyad rahimahullah crossed the straits, what we call Gibraltar. And Muslims entered in, liberating the land from tyranny, entered into the land and stayed there for almost 781 years. And Tariq landed on the Jebel, Jebel Tariq, that is known to us today as Gibraltar. The Muslims brought along with them civilization. Because Islam not only deals with the theoretical aspects of life, but also the practical aspects. And so they found the land fair seeming for the planting of citrus fruits. They planted lemons and grapefruits and limes and oranges. And the word in Arabic for orange is burtaqal. Ard al It was like the land of the oranges, it grew so well. And burtaqal became Portugal. They went to the north in the Russian states and they found a land that you needed to have a lot of sabr, a lot of patience to live in this land. And so it became Ard al-Sabr, Sabriya. And this we know today as Siberia. They went south, down past the Red Sea, into the ocean on East Africa. And they found that the Persians had had a base in East Africa and they called it Maqad Shah, and now we know it as Mogadishu. Musa ibn Baig, rahimahullah, founded a base on the East African coast, and so Musa ibn Baig's place is known as Mozambique. They went into the ocean and they found the wind blowing and they found rain coming in large numbers. So this Mosim of rain or season of rain became the monsoons. They went into the Pacific, and contrary to the little bit of knowledge that we understand about our own presence in this part of the world, Muslims went into the Pacific Ocean during the Umayyad period. And that we trace as, oh, that, that within a hundred years after the death of the Prophet ﷺ, they went into that region and they found a set of islands, and it was windy area. So he said, Juzul Hawa. There's a lot of hawa, air, wind. And so Juzul Hawa becomes Hawaii. They travel to parts of the world that you may not be aware of. And one could ask, how could a man coming from the Arabs, who at that, who at that time treasured their language, but did not treasure technology, how could they have done this? But we recognize that the dark ages, so-called dark ages of Europe, when the lights went off, went off after the fall of the Roman Empire, this was the golden age of Islam. And Muslims between the 8th century to the 14th, 15th century excelled in all of the disciplines that we now bow down to the West. And we study and we come to the University of Miami and Loyola and Harvard University in London and we thank our professor because he teaches us something about math but sifr is an Arabic word, zero. The number system we count is the Arabic numeral system. The basis of the computer age was started by Muslims. Algebra is from Jabr, this is an Arabic word. And you can go on into trigonometry, trigonometry, calculus, many of the disciplines, and you will find that the Muslims were actually ones who laid the foundation for this civilization. Alchemia, alchemy, chemistry. We led the world in that area. Astronomy, maps of visible stars, correcting the sun and moon tables, the first use of the pendulum to measure tables, the first to build observatories, predicted sunspots, eclipses, and the appearance of comets. Optics, leading the world. Medicine, Al-Qanun fit tib the law of medicine, being used by Europe up until the 17th, 18th century. And we can continue on and on and on and show the great advancements made by Muslims in all disciplines.